Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. Hello, Northlanders. It's Thursday, June 13th. I'm White Buckner, the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's what today's headlines. First Lady Jill Biden will visit Duluth today to help launch the Seniors for Biden-Harris organization in Minnesota. Her trip to Minnesota is intended to energize older voters in what has become a battleground state this presidential election. The exact location of her visit was not disclosed when this podcast was recorded. While recent polling in Minnesota has put Biden and former President Donald Trump in a statistical dead heat, a March 2024 Quinnipiac poll showed Biden leading Trump by eight points nationally among those 65 and older. The Biden-Harris campaign plans to use the event to contrast the current administration's legislative and executive successes with what Trump has said publicly. Specifically, campaign officials point to Democrats reducing the cost of prescription drugs, capping the price of insulin at $35 for seniors, and strengthening federal support for Social Security and Medicare. The campaign also cited comments Trump made regarding desires to make cuts to Medicare and Social Security and repeal the Affordable Care Act as an attack on Minnesota seniors. The decision to hold the event in Duluth, the highest population center in northeastern Minnesota, is telling. Once a Democrat stronghold, Republicans have steadily taken over most of the region over the last two decades. If the state's GOP can capture a state legislative seat left this year by Representative Dave Lizlegard, DFL Aurora, only one Democrat officeholder, Senator Grant Housechild, DFL Hermantown, will be left in the Iron Range. Watch DuluthNewsTribune.com today for our coverage of the First Lady's visit. The flag of the Grand Portage Band of Lake Superior Chippewa now stands as a fixture in the Cook County courtroom. In recognition of the local tribe's sovereignty and role in the community, local officials gathered for a ceremony May 31st to formally dedicate and install the flag alongside its state and American counterparts at the Cook County Courthouse. Judge Steve Hankey, who was in his first year as the North Shore's presiding judge, said the idea was inspired by Tribal Council Chair Robert Deschampe, who previously advocated bringing an exterior flag inside the county boardroom. The ceremony featured the band's veteran honor guard, and was attended by a number of tribal members, county officials, and other judicial partners. Courts across the state have added tribal flags in recent years as they seek to strengthen ties with local bands and make courtroom spaces more inclusive. Carleton County, for example, displays a Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa flag, while Itasca County has one for the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. It's time now for this week's Business Beat with Duluth News Tribune business reporter Brielle Bredsten. Flag raising at the range. A flag raising ceremony will be taking place this Saturday, June 15th at 1 p.m. at Forgotten Heroes Ranges and Retreat in McGregor. The 934th Air Force Civil Engineer Reserve Unit will conduct the official presentation and raising of the flags, which were flown over the nation and state capitals in honor of the organization. The event will also feature a civilian flyover, silent auction, merchandise sales, and planting of the first memorial tree. The range, located at 23796 450th Street, is anticipated to open this fall, followed by a campground next year. The property will feature a completely handicap-accessible outdoor rifle, pistol, and archery range, a veterans and community center, paths, ponds, and a campground with fire pits. All disabled veterans or individuals their families and caretakers, as well as law enforcement and first responders, will have access to the facilities free of charge. More information is available at ForgottenHeroesMN.org. Juneteenth Celebration The 50th Annual Juneteenth Jamboree Celebration by the National Association for Advancement of Colored Peoples 
Branch in Duluth is set for Wednesday, June 19th from 3 to 7 p.m. at the Central Hillside Community Center. The nationally recognized holiday commemorates the abolition of slavery in 1865. Organizers say this year's event will be their biggest yet. Over 40 vendors, including many local Black, Indigenous, and people of color business owners, will be selling their goods and services. There will also be giveaways. Free dinner will be provided by Howard's Q's, Pizza Luce, and Room at the Table, as well as Grilled Burgers. The family-friendly event has a variety of activities, including an obstacle course, bounce house, face painting, a photo booth, and more. Maurice's will also be giving away free clothing, and free haircuts are also available. Two scoops, please. Crank and Dasher has plans to open its second ice cream shop in Duluth this July. It'll be located next to Amity Coffee on Superior Street in East Duluth. There will be a special events and promotions throughout the opening month. Crank and Dasher's first location at Fitgers is situated near the Lake Walk, and its products are also sold at local grocery stores like Mount Royal. The local business also recently expanded into the Twin Cities market through a partnership with Kowalski's Markets. The new shop will serve a rotation of ice cream flavors made of farm-sourced ingredients, including cream from Forest Lake-based Autumnwood Family Farm, as well as vegan options and items from their confectionery line. I'm Brielle Bredston. Send some more business tips to me at bbredston at duluthnews.com. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought by Superior Telegram's history podcast, Archive Dive. Weather for the Duluth area today, looking at mostly sunny skies with a few afternoon clouds and a slight chance of a rain shower. High temperatures in the upper 70s with some breezy conditions from the west-northwest. Getting down to the mid-50s for tonight, and then for Friday, a little bit cooler outside, plenty of sunshine, but highs only in the mid to upper 60s. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist Robert Pointer. Thank you to Archive Dive for their support. The Monthly History Podcast, hosted by Superior Telegram reporter Maria Lockwood, dips into the archives of historic events, people, and places around Superior and Douglas County. A new episode titled The Rediscovery of Dick Bong's March Plane is now available at superiortelegram.com or wherever you also get this podcast. Reporting for today's episode was done by Mark Wasson, Tom Olson, and Brielle Bredston. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.